Yeah. It's weird, and then like when you when you play an instrument wrong, your body hurts. <laughs> so I know I'm all tense back there, right? And my back is like screaming at me. I was in college, and uh, I was in the brass class at Biola, and I thought, you know what? I've tried to play the trumpet before, but let me just try real quick, because we got to choose what we wanted to play. And I, I thought I was gonna, my neck was going to explode. I played it wrong. What can I say? So there is a right way. <laughs> there was a way that seemed right to this man, but the end was me blowing out my neck, I guess. So, hey, do you have your Bibles? Let's do this the right way. Can I see them? Let's hold them up. And we make a declaration before we hear the word of God so that we're postured correctly to receive from God. It's like, Lord, whatever you're saying, that's what I want to hear. So let's say this together. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. Amen, amen. And would you open to John chapter 1? No surprise to you, we're in the book of John going verse by verse, teaching you what the Apostle John has to say. And this week, we're going to be in verses 6 through 9. Verses 6 through 9, although we're going to recap a little bit from 4 and give you some context. Is that okay? And any volunteers to read John 1, verses 4 through 9. If you have a volunteer, can be a young person, can be a less than young person. All right. Oh, you know what? I'm closer here. I'm already sweating, Don. Sorry, I'll catch you on the flip-flop. You said 4 through 9? I said four through nine. Okay. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. ESV version. ESV. Just make sure you know. That's nice. And so who is being talked about here? Someone with a name. Verse 6, man sent from God, name of John, right? Okay. And so, but before we get too far into this, I think it's interesting that this John is not this John. This John is different than this John, all right? And it, it's kind of confusing sometimes, isn't it? And you have to read it really slowly because you can all of a sudden start meshing these things together and be like, wait a second, I thought, you know, no, no, it's, it's not the same guy. So, number four said, in him was life and the life was the light of men. The life was the light of men. Life and light are part of John's, see here we go, this John's vernacular and vocabulary. He, he's built this in to describe the logos, right? This is how he portrays and communicates verbally. He uses some certain words and he uses them over and over again so that it can start to build up a repetition, build up a a sort of constancy or consistency in people's minds and his listeners so that they get it. Two plus two is five. Right? And the more often that you, my friend Brian says, perfect practice makes perfect. You've heard practice make perfect? No, perfect practice makes perfect. Practice just makes permanent. You practice whatever you're going to get. If you keep doing the wrong thing, you're going to have a habit of doing the wrong thing. But if you do the right thing, you're going to have habits built in of doing the right thing. When you read your word every day, it becomes this blessed habit that's no longer a chore that like it may have started out to being right when you first started now it becomes this life-giving process this is my system this is what I do it's it's like air this is like oxygen to me and I know a lot of you feel like coffee is that but I, I assure you it doesn't uh, stack up against the word of God okay uh, but 
the life was the light of men. So look for these words, life and light. Life and light, because John is communicating something, the Apostle John, to us. And, and he wants to describe the logos in, in nature and on mission. Say in nature, in nature. and on mission. Who knows that the word of God, hmm, the word of God is so unique. What else compares to the Logos? Can you think of anything? Nothing. And the more we learn about the Logos, the more we're going to believe truly, oh, there is no one like the word. There is no one like the word. And also say on mission. Who knows that the the Logos had a mission? The word of God was sent here on mission. And we'll get into that more later. But, you know, those of you who know what we're talking about, Jesus had a purpose and a plan and would not deviate from that plan. That's exciting. It's exciting to watch his life unfold. These same words painted pictures in the minds of the hearers, or in our case, the readers of the word, of the Logos. Uh, This past year and a half uh, has given me a similar experience. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, boost myself up in the level of the Apostle John or anything, but I am saying that I believe that I've been given a vocabulary from the Lord in order to communicate the truths about the ministry, our mission, the word of God, who calls us, he's, he's the only one that puts us on mission anyway, right? Otherwise, we could do whatever we want. <laughs> Isn't that true? Shoot the moon. Jesus, he said, like, I want you to do something. You do that thing. And then in your free time, behave. I mean, right? Essentially. Yeah. And so we have to make sure that we don't not do the mission, even if we behave all the time. Amen? Amen. I mean, let's get real serious because there's a lot of people who are like, they're nice. They're good. They're, you know. Good. They're good people. They're decent, you know? They don't take advantage of people. They don't harm people. They're, they're kind. They're generous. But so many, and even so many so-called Christians, are not on mission. They're not living their life with a purpose, and they're not any good to anyone eternally. That must not be us. That will not be us. Amen. So here's what I want to do is I want you to think about, because I'm going to come around with a microphone and ask you to remember some of these words that in this past year and a half, through online services and such, what words I've been using to describe our ministry. You can keep those on the whole time. That's good with the lights. You can keep that on the whole time. Who wants to, to be brave and try to remember what words I've been using to describe our ministry? Okay, my daughter... You, you want to just try one? Don't get nervous now. Just try, okay, just try one phrase. Well, I don't know if it's like describing the ministry, but I remember the good life. The good life. That's exactly right. Yes, that's exactly right. Jeremiah 29, 11 was read today. That's talking exactly about the good life. We want people to know that Jesus isn't trying to take things from you. He's trying to give you the good life. He's trying to give you life and more abundantly. And we're not even in John 10 yet. Look at that. (laughs) Who else can remember words that I've been using to describe what we're doing, what season we're in, what's happening around here? I thought this was going to play a lot better when I was making these notes, by the way. (laughs) Multiplying disciples. Amen. That's right. That's right. Very, oh, so good, Jacob. In a new wineskin. New wineskin. That's right. Multiplying disciples. Anyone else? Come on, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. What else can you remember that I've been talking about over and over and over again? I'm not exactly saying if you've been paying attention, you'd know, but almost. <laughs> Chloe, all alone. What happened? <laughs> but you're being so good. To piggyback off of Jacob's answer and give you a little prompting, be fruitful. And multiply. Oh, someone had that one. I stole yours, right? Ah, that was the one I was just about to raise my hand and say. Ah. What else you got? All right, coming over. A word that you've been using a lot is logos. Logos, that's yes. 
Because without the word, I'd be out of a job. No, I'm just kidding. Without the word, we would have nothing. Without the logos, in the beginning, the logos, the logos was with God. The logos was God, and it still is. Can you think of anything else that I've been saying to describe where we were and where we are now, or where we're entering, what we're becoming, who we were, what we've left, where we're going, who we are? Jacob, give the people some help. House churches. House churches. It's part of it. Into the light, yes. Yes. Which? Persons of peace. Persons of peace. Finding persons. This is all part of that be fruitful and multiply strategy. Okay, Brian, you got one in the back. I'm coming to you. This, this is going to freak other Brian out because I'm going to be right here. Sorry, online. We just got to deal with it. All right. Making disciples. Making disciples, yes. Very good. Okay, now I'm going to get back to my notes and I'm going to let you off the, the hook right now. These jokes are off the hook, right? <laughs> oh, Jonathan, you have one? Heal with the gospel and miracles. Very good. Heal with the gospel and miracles. Be fruitful and multiply. How about new wineskins? Right? Holding new wine. Isn't that right? Uh, the Lord is doing a new thing. Shall you not know it? Behold, I will do a new thing, God says. How about the entering into the promised land, right? We're exiting, we're going through the wilderness from bondage, through the wilderness where God teaches us how to be his into the promised land. This is a recap, so you'll know next time I ask. How about family style ministry? You've been hearing me say a lot about that lately, right? Family style, all of these would have worked. These are sufficient answers. How about covenant people, right? We, when we pray, God, because you covenanted with us, you said that you would do this, and you can never break your word. You don't lie. Amen. We fully trust you. Disciple makers and church planters, add to it. How about rabbits and elephants? Remember that? Yeah, see, there's some things that we keep saying over and over to paint these pictures of. We're not doing that old thing anymore. We're doing a new thing, and, and really it comes directly from the Scripture, what Jesus kind of has always had placed in here for us. The Holy Spirit inspired these men to write the Bible and said, do this and do it like this. And when you go to do that, say this and don't talk to them. I mean, there's a lot of specific instruction. And if you're anything like me, and I imagine you are, sometimes you just gloss right over it. And you get through your reading and you miss, oh, I could do that. I could go to a friend's house and say, peace be on this house and see how they respond. And maybe discover that I'm, I'm operating with a person of peace who's willing to receive the gospel. Amen. And then that prompts me to share. Amen. So let me ask you this. Has anyone seen The Chosen? How about season two, episode one? Have you gotten that far yet? Woo! You're in for a treat. You are in for a treat. Uh, this opening scene... Well, and really all throughout, here's the Apostle John, and he's saying, look, I've, I've been with this Jesus from the beginning of his ministry, and I have to write it down because I, these other guys are going to miss some things. That They weren't all there from the beginning. I was there, and how can I possibly capture and then communicate something so huge? I mean, the logos, right? How can I communicate something so huge? The greatest man who ever lived, the God-man, and my beloved friend, right? I mean, the series is called The Beloved. Not to mention the only hope of all mankind for all eternity, past, present, and future. This is a big deal. This isn't like your you know, sixth grade writing assignment, right? Write a theme, what I want for Christmas, right? A red writer, be okay. This is not that. It's way bigger than that. Imagine the weight. You, you, have to, you, you know that you're charged. You're meant to write the, and chronicle this existence, chronicle this mission and the nature of the Logos. That's, that's a tall order. And you'll see him wrestle through it. 
And eventually, of course, he comes back to how we start in Genesis, in the beginning. It's a beautiful picture. And so he, he's got this monumental task of, of doing this. Now, in the same way, again, that the Apostle John, uh, admittedly for me, you know, with far lesser stakes, um, Pastor Jennifer and I have wrestled with and poured over and discussed and formulated this vocabulary that we have now so that we can all embrace this language and, dare I say, remember it, so that whoever we minister the word to understands exactly what the Logos has called us into and what he's called us to do. In verse 5 it says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Just start anywhere. Overcome. When something overcomes something, is it over or under it? It's over it, right? Now, the Bible also tells us that we're meant to be above only and not beneath. Nothing's going to overcome us in the light. Amen? No one is going to beat Jesus. Jesus is in us. So the light shines where? And where does light appear the brightest? In the darkness. I mean, I could, I could turn on my phone. I'll just do it right now. Look, I got it right here. How much did that do? How much did that help us? I mean, eh, it's fine. It's not a problem, right? It's good. But when it's dark, and I'm trying not to fall down those steps in the tech booth when I leave at night, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine so I don't break my crazy neck going down those stairs. That's what I'm going to do. And so... Light shines and appears brightest in the dark. It's so noticeable because of the contrast or the difference between darkness and light. Uh, kids, is light and dark different? Yes, it is. How much different? All the different. <laughs> I like that. That's exactly how I would have said it too. It's all the different. Jesus shone so brightly and in such stark contrast to the world, even the religious world around him, who knows that's true, Oh, yeah, no, we're religious. We're godly. We, we got this whole thing, and, and we got all the power, too. And, and Jesus is like, well, I don't like how you're using it. I don't like how you're running my show. I don't like how you're using my house. And so what does Jesus do? Anyone remember? A couple things. He what? He doesn't get a whip. He makes a whip. Have you ever braided someone's hair? So he braided a whip together, and then came back. Indiana Jones, this thing. And he started flipping over tables like he was wrecking the place because like, my house shall be a house of prayer. A house of prayer. You've made it a den of thieves. My house should be a house of prayer. And so ask me why Pastor Jennifer and I are so committed and, and are calling you with such emphasis to these city prayer gatherings. Why? Because the Logos commands it. My house will be a house of prayer. Why? Because when we seek God in prayer, all of a sudden, he's working with us. When we get on God's plan through prayer, all of a sudden, we're, wow, we're successful all of a sudden. What happened? This is amazing. So, since Jesus shone so brightly, and his church, you and I, are meant to shine so brightly, we're meant to make an impression because there's darkness all around us. You know, another bit of scripture that has been carrying through this past two and a half years as we've been entering into this new wineskin uh, has been darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Who knows that darkness is running rampant? Darkness is just allowed to be everywhere nearly unchecked. Is that true? Does anybody watch the news? I mean, like you know what's going on. And if you go outside of your house, you know what's going on. You'll encounter somebody somewhere. I, I, I was out doing, I'm not going to get too specific. I was out somewhere conducting some business. And uh, it, it sounds real shady when I say it that way. <laughs> I, uh, hey, you got the stuff? No, no, I mean, it wasn't like that. I, I was just out there doing normal, you know, godly person life stuff, and I came across this person, 
and, and they were trying to find my account, and I noticed on the iPad that the name was a girl's name. And the person I was interacting with looked like a girl. But they have a name badge on that doesn't match that name. And it's a boy's name. And I said, oh, I said, is, that, is your name such and such, you know, the, the girl's name? Uh, oh, no, that was my, my birth name. Uh, I am, insert boy name here now. Do you see what I'm saying? This, <laughs> no one's isolated. Darkness is covering the earth. Deep darkness is covering the people. What did I do? Did I throw a Bible at, at that person? No. Did I, did I slam this person with the gospel or anything? No. Love? Oh, okay. That's what I said. What was I going to do driving through something? Nothing. That wasn't my time. But did I pray on my way out? Yes, I did. Lord, break this delusion. Shine your light so clearly that you can just break through all the noise, all the distraction. Heal whatever needs healing. Tear down whatever needs tearing down so that there's, there's no block between you and them. That's what love does. So I did what I could in that moment. And it's not bad. I prayed. I sought the Lord. And I believe that we will see things like turnarounds. I, think that we, I believe that we will see, like Pastor Caleb was up here the other day. He calls it kicking the tires. He was, he was looking around our campus and seeing all the, the incredible work that Mark and, and uh, our congregation have done. And uh, he was saying, yeah, there's even on some news outlet that you would think is not necessarily good with anything but the narrative, right? That they were saying, oh yeah, but there are some who, who have wanted to go back the other way afterwards, trying to, be, trying to be sensitive to young ears and such, you know? But you know what I'm saying? So you were born one way, then you try to go another way, and, it's, and then other people saying, now, now I, re I really wish I, I didn't or I could go back, you know? And so uh, darkness is very real, but light, pff, we got it all day. Shine the light in the darkness. It shines brightest in the darkness. And when people feel genuine love, they're going to be drawn to that light and that life. Amen. So when people come up to you and ask, well, what, what is it about you? You know, uh, I'll talk to people and, and I'm like, I just see this in you. And, and people are like, well, thank God, because he must have done a work because that didn't used to be me. You know, like, <laughs> amen. Me too. I know. It's like, I don't road rage on the road anymore. Hallelujah. And uh, the Lord has delivered me. Uh, it, it can happen for you. <laughs> so whatever you need, just ask the Lord. Um, we want people to come to us and ask, what is it about you? So we get to say, oh, I got to introduce you to this Jesus. You, you won't believe it. You, you would not believe that your life can change for the better this much. Come and see, right? No, verse number six, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Uh, again, it's confusing because there's a John writing this gospel, and there is a John that he references here that's not him. In fact, we'll notice that John plays things pretty coyly when referring to himself. Isn't that true? We'll get to that later. But here he's speaking of the other John. John the Baptist. Baptist. That's right. Uh, back to the chosen. Remember, Simon Peter keeps calling this man Crazy John. You mean Crazy John? <laughs> By the way, that's the title of this message. It's Crazy John. Crazy John. He wasn't the light, but he was sent in the world to testify of that light. So we discover in two other Gospels, Matthew and Mark, that that there's a more precise description of this crazy John, that may, that may not be so polite. John the Baptist is an amazing man. We all know that, right? So it, we're just tongue in cheek. But he wore a garment of camel's hair. Are you, are you hearing me on this? A garment of what hair? Camel hair. Camel hair. Do you have any shirts made of camel hair? Probably not. Probably not. And he wore a leather belt, and he ate locusts and wild honey. But I want to ask you a question. Kids, do you want to feel a real live camel so you can, can, so you can feel what John was, was going through? You do? Well, I don't have one. I called, I called on my rancher friends, and I asked. 
but they said they didn't have a camel. Uh, Mary said, she said, I have a donkey. <laughs> I said, no, that's not going to cut enough for this sermon. Uh, I'll, I'll hit you up next time. But I'll tell you what, he, he, he not only wore a camel skin garment and a leather belt, but he also ate something. Uh, Ed, what, what, show, us, show us what he ate. What did he eat? Locusts. Show, is there another picture? Show, show other pictures. Who, who wants to eat any of these? Anyone brave? No. <laughs> okay, well, here's some locusts in here. Don't let, it, don't let it open. No, it's fine. They don't. I want to. You don't want to? Okay. That's all right. Let's leave right here. No. Ah! <laughs> just kidding. It was empty. All of it. It was empty. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I've got to keep you awake during these messages is all. <laughs> Would anyone in here, as your regular diet, eat this? No. No. I mean, no. I could just stay on here for a little while. No. Blah. Picture this guy. The honey, I can get, I, I'm behind the honey. Honey's delicious. Right? I mean, you had to like dunk that thing. I, I mean, I could not get past it. Locust on a stick. Hun honey dip locust. <laughs> no. Crunch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what are you eating? Nothing, honey. <laughs> if that's all you got, nothing. All right. Uh, so, crazy John, John the Baptist, who's actually related to Jesus. How? Cousins. They're cousins. Oh, we got cousins right here in the front row. Yeah. No, you want to be John the Baptist? We get, we'll skin a camel real quick. No, it's kidding. Terrible, terrible. I didn't mean that. All right. John is only about six months older than Jesus, you remember. And uh, you can read about that in Luke chapter 1 if you want to learn more. In verse 7 it says, John came as a witness. Someone say witness. To bear witness about the light. Oh, that's interesting. That all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. See, John had a purpose in this life, and he actually lived his purpose. As we think about John's life and ministry and message, consider your own life. And if you even know what God has created you for, and then if you do, are you actually living it? See, look, John came as a witness to bear witness. It's what he was and what he did. So let's, let's see, children. What is a witness? What's a witness? Someone who saw something firsthand. Someone who saw something firsthand. That is a witness. What does a witness do? Oh, stand by. A witness then is supposed to... Testifies. Testify about the thing they saw firsthand, right? Exactly. John was a witness, and he witnessed. Someone who has seen or heard something and tells the truth about what they've seen, they got false witnesses against Jesus, isn't that true? Until Jesus just gave them what they needed. Who knows that you can know something and never tell anyone about it? You can know it and never say it. You can know the truth, never say it. Right? Who broke that dish? Nobody knows nothing. Right? All of a sudden. That person is not operating as a witness in that moment. See, Jesus later brings John the Baptist right back to the power of witnessing. When John asked Jesus, are you the Messiah or are you waiting for another? Do you remember this? He's in prison. And Jesus replies, he sends the disciples back to John in prison. He says, don't give him an answer, essentially. But you go be a witness to John 
telling him what you've seen me accomplish. You go, as a witness, be a witness. Notice that John the Baptist doesn't just witness to any old thing. He wasn't a walking billboard. You see these guys with the sandwich boards? Crazy hair, I should be so lucky. Megaphone, you know, talking about, you're going to hell. Repent or die. That's not loving. That's not going to do anything. Amen. Right? You old bald head, you old bald head. That didn't work out very well for those kids. Do you remember that with the prophet Elisha? <laughs> um, that was a Bible joke. You may have gotten it. Uh, no. He, he wasn't an, an advertisement. Did anyone see Mystery Men? Captain Amazing, right? Had all these endorsements. Pepsi. All these Pennzoil endorsements on his, on his super suit. No. John witnessed about the light. Why? It says right there in the scripture. Can we put that scripture back up? Where are we? Verse 7. That all might believe through him. That's why. Through his witness. Him saying what he experienced. And notice his commitment. Strange clothing. Strange menu. Living in the wilderness. He's a wild man, right? <laughs> Loudly proclaiming the truth. There's this, this great a cappella song about John the Baptist, and, and it's like he's saying, he's like, if you like honey, wait until you try the bees. That's, that's a cool line. He's loudly proclaiming the truth in the wilderness. Crazy John, right? And of course, that's where they got it. So we also know that John the Baptist had followers or disciples of his own. Don't we know that? And that when Jesus arrived, John let his best, his brightest, his most committed, his most skilled disciples leave to follow Jesus. Look, the light, the light is here now. No conversation, no discussion. It's, he's identified, and the disciples are on their way. And it's right for them to follow Jesus instead of John. Amen? See, there's a lot of times that I'll get all this credit. You know, Laura's so funny. She's like, I'll be praying about something, and it'll come out of your mouth on Sunday. You know, and I'm like, well, that, there's no way I could know this. The Holy Spirit is tuned in and dialed into every one of you, and so some things that I'll bring up, even that I'll plan, I'm working on this all week or whatever, he'll, he'll say, no, well, Victor needs to hear this. This is going to comfort somebody. This is going to bring an answer to somebody. And that's why I say it's not me. It was right that they left John to follow Jesus. Okay, now for his mission. That all might believe in the light. You find that one, Ed? That all might believe in the light. Not some might believe. All. It does say might, so it doesn't mean that everybody will. Very astute. <laughs> that all might believe through him. Why does the Bible say that with such definitive and then like loosey-goosey words? Why do you think? Oh, Noah, give it to me. Everyone has the choice. And so they can choose? Whether or not they will believe through him. Oh, my gosh. 11 years old. Crushing it. It's, that's exactly right. Noah, I'm... Have I ever been more proud of you? I don't know. You're amazing. That all might believe through him. Everyone has the chance to believe based on John as a witness, witnessing. Everyone can believe. They might. All might believe. All might still believe. I believe that no one was ever born that couldn't have been saved. And, and I'm, I don't know theologically, the one that I really have a hard time with is Judas Iscariot, because it talks about his destiny. But knowing God's character, had Judas repented after the betrayal? Man, you're in, baby, you're in with me paradise forever. I know you messed up. 
But look, God made it good. We got everybody saved, right? That's God's character. So I can't, I can't prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt, but that's my gut based on God's character. So all can believe in the light. All can get this life that we're talking about. The light of man, right? This life was that. But we know that all do believe. There are some who won't ever believe. But they all might. And how do you know? Right? So should, should you not witness? Because they might not. Yeah, but they might. We've all been sent as witnesses. And we all have a testimony. We all, this is my testimony. Say it. Tell somebody how good God is. Because all might. Look, if I live out my mission, if I keep talking up the Messiah, if I keep witnessing to what I've seen, all might believe through me, John says. We're still talking about him. We're still talking about him. John's witness is still working. We don't know how far things can go. We don't know what depth is going to reach into someone's heart when we just speak our story. You might think, yeah, but I've told it 50 times. Yeah, they've never heard it. Look, I almost died in a car accident one time. Well, not in a near car accident. The Lord spared me even from the accident. But it would have been bad. It was 25 years ago. Do you think I still care about that testimony? Yeah. Yeah. Dead or alive, that's kind of a big deal. I'd rather be alive, thank you. Number eight, he was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. He was not the light. I mean, what kind of humility, what kind of self-sacrifice does this take to do that? John the Baptist was not the light, and he knew it, and he was okay with it. It's fine, not the light. He just kept on his spiritual mission, with all its natural implications, camel's hair, locusts, wilderness living, so he could please God, who gave him life and a mission. He could please God and prepare the way for the Savior of the world, because all might just believe. I'll live my whole life witnessing about that light, he says. The light that shines in the darkness, the light that cannot be overcome, that's what John was about. And that's what the Apostle John is writing to us about right now. And as we study verse by verse, it's nice to kind of just pause and dwell in the fullness of a couple verses of Scripture. You say, here's John. <laughs> here's Jeff. Right? Here's John. Here's me. And it's not, it's not too late. It's not too late. As we close, why don't we do this? Why don't we start processing this, our life in, in light of this, our own lives. Where are you right now? What is God speaking to you? What, what does he want you to do about this? Who does he want you to become? What does he want you to act like? Because you, remember, you can be the thing and not do the thing. Julie, do the thing. You could be the thing and not do the thing. You got to do the thing that God called you to do. We all have to. And my role, my job, my gig, my purpose is to equip you to do the work that God has called you to do. Be the person he's called you to be and do what goes along with it. Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? What do you see in my life that needs adjustment? What do you need to remind me of that maybe I embraced at one time, but I've let go? I've forgotten. I'm not mindful of. I don't, I don't retain how fearfully and wonderfully you've made me. I'm not mindful that you're going to give me success 
when I'm about your business. Remind us, Lord. Remind our hearts. Who are my brothers and sisters, Jesus says. Those who do the will of my Father in heaven. If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus says. Father, even in this holy time as we've gathered as your people, what better Father's Day gift to you would there be than to embrace your plans and purpose for our lives? So much so that we don't just come and sit and listen, but we come to Jesus, hear his sayings, and do them. And we build our lives solid because nothing is more important not work, not school, not sleep, not entertainment, not vacation. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, that you say it doesn't have to hurt. I just want you to obey me. If it seems like a small thing, just do it. It seems like a big thing, do it. And God will always reward you. Show us, remind us, inspire us again, Lord. Revive us again, even as the old hymn says. Fill our hearts with your love. And may our souls be rekindled with your fire from above. Fill us to overflowing with your spirit. May we be set ablaze and shine so brightly in this dark world around people who are enshrouded and covered in darkness that the darkness just goes away. You haven't called anyone else to shine brightly. You haven't given anyone else the light and the life. You've given it to us so that we can be conduits, messengers, deliverers, emissaries. Help us live out our purpose. Help us to be a witness and to witness. Now let me ask you, would you get specific? Would you ask the Lord, who do I need to engage with about this? He'll tell you. Who needs to hear more about this incredible love this logos who has nothing but goodness in mind in heart and in store for me who do you know that you need to tell about it ask him just ask him obviously the answer will be different for every one of us Lord put that person on my heart and in fact, as the shepherd of this flock, Lord, I, I confidently say, put a burning desire in us that will be unsettling and uncomfortable unless we do it. Even in scripture, it says, like a fire shut up in my bones. And it was like heartburn until I did it. Lord, may we be prompted to such action. Remind us. We embrace it. We embrace your truth. In Jesus' name, we will do it. If you, right now, from the sound of my voice in this building and online, if you'll say, yes, I will, follow Jesus, I will obey, I will do the word, I will be a witness, I will live as a witness, then would you close this prayer time with me with a hearty amen? Amen. amen.